In this video, we're going to review a word problem, and we're going to talk about how to approach word problems, no matter what kind of math is involved. If you want to take a minute, go ahead and pause the video and read the problem, and then go ahead and unpause it, and we're going to go through it together. So, I want to think just about the way that word problems are structured. If I start at the top and I read all of this information, I don't find out until the end what I'm supposed to do with it. Probably by that time I've forgotten all the information from the first part of the problem. So when you see that you have a word problem, the first thing that I want you to do is just find the question mark and identify what the question is. After that, we can look at the information and we can think of the information like tools for solving the problem and we may not need some of those tools. So the first thing we're going to do is just figure out what is the question asking me to find and it's okay even if I don't totally understand it. So the question is, what is the balance of Fatima's savings account now? So that's what I'm looking for is the balance of Fatima's savings account. Then I'm going to look at all of the information and I'm just going to make a list of the information and decide which information helps me with my problem and which information I may not need to answer this question specifically. So right away I can see that the question talks about her checking account and her savings account. So I'm going to think about those pieces of information differently. So we've got her checking and we have her savings. So she started with 975 in her checking account and she started with 500 in her savings account. She writes a check for $700 to cover her rent. And since it's a check, that's going to be a subtraction. Oh, sorry, not 200, 700. And then she deposits $50 in her savings account. And if I keep in mind what the question is, remember it's asking only about savings, which means I don't need to deal with this part of the information at all. And then it's very clear what it is that I need to use to solve the problem. And so this question says, does the problem give you any information that you don't need? And yes, any information about her checking account is not needed to answer the question about her savings account. Okay, and then we're just going to do the math and find the solution, which is the answer. So she started with $500 and she deposited 50. So that means she ended with 550. And then we always want to check in and make sure we could explain this answer to somebody else. Does the answer make sense? Does the size of the number make sense? Does the question, is the question answered by the solution? And so you always want to check and make sure you could explain it to someone else. So I would say something like, I'm confident that this is the correct answer. I know that we're looking only for the savings account balance. That meant that I could ignore all of the information about her checking account. And I'm very familiar with these whole numbers and I'm confident when that I added them together that her final uh, balance was 550. So always check and make sure you could teach the problem to somebody else if they didn't understand it. If you can't, go back to the question look at the information again, and you may want to rethink which information you use to solve the problem.